Hi, I'm Kelly Gonzalez with KellyGonzalez.com, helping you to be the spark, make a positive change in your life through a mind, body, and spirit connection. And today we're focusing on restorative movement and overall feeling good. So oftentimes I hear people say, I have to stretch. Yes, flexibility is extremely important and you do need to stretch, but sometimes you cannot only just stretch. You must first work with self myofascial release. And that's what we're gonna be covering today. So I'd like you to imagine a rubber band. And when you tie a knot in a band, and then you stretch the band, pulling on both ends, what happens to that knot? It gets tighter. Well, the same thing happens with your connective tissue. So we have something called fascia, which encases all of our muscles. And when that fascia gets a knot in it, anywhere, it disrupts the whole entire chain. And we can get trigger points, we will, you may feel that pain radiating somewhere else, um, and it limits your range of motion for your joints, your performance, it can cause aches and pains, and frequent um, trips to the massage therapist, which is not inexpensive. So one of the best things that you can do is learn how to perform self myofascial release, which is a self-massage technique. So for this movement, you will need a foam roller. Now, I recommend Trigger Point. This is my favorite roller. It's great for travel. It's um, small, compact. I also like it because it does not lose its um, structure. So you may see like the foam rollers that are actually made of styrofoam. After a while, due to the compression, they lose their um, integrity, where this is like actually like a PVC pipe in here and then it's a little bit soft around here so it's not too intense. You will also need basic tools that you can find at your sporting goods store such as a softball. So softball is fantastic for um, various areas like the glutes. Um, I even get into my psoas, my hip flexors with it. And then another tool, a lacrosse ball. So I grew up playing lacrosse back in Maryland, um, played D1 but I wish I knew about using the ball um, for my fast release back then. Could have used it. And finally, if you have a strap or a jump rope, something, a towel is great too, um, something that you can work on flexibility. So my method for restorative movement is one, we release. So we release the knots, release the tension. Two, we elongate. We send that um, muscle back to its normal length through flexibility and stretching. And then finally, uh, we work on activation, which is neurologically telling the muscles, okay, you've been knotted up for a while, now I'm gonna remind you how you're supposed to function so that you can stabilize my joints and help me move with ease. So, starting off, we're gonna get into the feet first. And for the feet, I like to use the lacrosse ball. So, you can do this standing, but for the sake of showing you here, because of the camera angle, I'm going to sit down. And so you're going to just take a seat, you're going to take your foot, place it on the lacrosse ball, and just roll back and forth. Now, our hands and our feet have so many nerve endings. That's how we perceive the world. So we have our proprioceptors, and they help with alignment and balance and overall gait movement. So we want to make sure that the feet are nice and loose. And you may feel some knots in there. When you feel something that's a little bit uncomfortable, just hold it there. Now you can get up around, you may have heard of reflexology. So around, um, let's say your big toe is the meridian in traditional Chinese medicine for um, kidney one. And um, it's really interesting. So you can check that out. Google reflexology and you can find all the little points on your feet. And give yourself a little foot massage maybe. So getting into the feet, you're going to spend however long you need to here. You roughly want to spend about, you know, two to five minutes on each body part. But for the sake of time, I'm going to keep it moving. So feet, start from the ground up. Then I'm going to use my roller and get into the calves. So for the calves, something I like to do is Add a little more pressure. I place one foot on and then I cross the other leg over top. 
And if I want to apply more pressure, I'm just going to lift my body weight up. And I'm going to use my hands to help me glide up and down this calf. Going from the base all the way up to the back of the calf. But you want to make sure you don't want to go right behind the knee. Okay, it's a very sensitive area and we don't want to cause hyperextension. So you just want to go just right up to that knee part and then right back down. And something I like to do is you can like windshield wiper, go side to side, and really get in there. Imagine that you're like scrubbing it clean, getting those knots really just released, getting the muscle back to its normal length. All right. And you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So the feet and then the calves. Once you've done the release, then we wanna add the stretch. So a stretch that I really like is to come into a downward facing dog. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna place your hands shoulder distance apart, your knees start on the ground, tuck your toes, and then lift your hips, press back, and then keep a bend in the knee to begin with. Draw the belly button in, and then slowly just lower your chest towards your thighs. And then one at a time, begin to pedal out your feet. And then hold, one heel up, one down, hold for about 30 seconds, breathe. Remember that breathing is going to help release that tension from your body. So it's extremely important. That is our vital tool. So now we've done the feet and the calves, we're going to go up and we're going to do hamstrings. So same thing here, I like to use the roller for hamstrings. Similar motion to the calves. You're going to come on top. And then use your hands like gliders here to help you roll down and roll back up. Now, a lot of times the knots come in at the attachment points. So the hamstrings attach right into that connection where the glutes and the hamstrings meet. So what I like to do is really single it out. I come on one side and then just lift this leg up a little bit higher and then just go within like a two inch radius, back and forth, back and forth. And then you can do a little internal and external motion with the foot. So internal, external, internal, external. So that way the femur is moving and you're getting a broader surface area through that hamstring. Okay. And then we can flip over and just do the IT bands here. Now, the IT bands are this fiber band that run from your hip down to your knee. They help with squatting, walking, running, biking, and they don't get a lot of love. They don't get a lot of blood flow. So they can get very stiff, and it's easy to get scar tissue built up along that band. And we want to keep it free of that. So you're going to stack your feet, come into a side plank position, and then go right above the knee along your outer thigh, and then slowly roll down. Ah. It's not comfortable. So you want to think like yoga. You just want to breathe through it. And the more you can breathe and the more relaxed you can stay, the more effective this method will be. So it's not easy. But you know, fitness is a lot like life. And when you come up against something that's a little bit uncomfortable, you just breathe right through it ah. <laughs> and smile through it. Maybe laugh. Okay. That's painful. Okay. <laughs> In a good way. <laughs> because we know that we never want to sacrifice the short-term reward of just ignoring this. 